Okay, this is the answer to chess, the history. So starting way back with Wilhelm Steinitz, uh, the first world champion, first world recorded world champion of chess. It's plain as black. So they just push through the center, nice and steady. We're gonna blitz through these um, games just to get to the crux of the answer to chess process. So throughout the games that I've studied, basically it's around putting pressure on the king, as you see this opponent is actually doing to Wilhelm. Yeah, putting pressure on the king or the king area. It's as simple as that. No fancy words need to be mentioned, no fancy openings, etc, etc. The whole concept really, right from the very beginning, from the early days of playing chess, the idea is to put pressure towards the king, or the king area, or the pieces around the king. So obviously they attack, so they're keeping that pressure. Now the pawn is opened in front of um, white's king. So there's potential for starting to put pressure towards the king area. So the knight starts developing. They bring their rook in. Do white to try and put pressure towards the pawn. The knight jumps in, squeezing a little bit more space towards white's king area. And now you can see the queen's coming in, almost kind of sacrificing itself in a way. But the opponent goes backwards. Because either way, if they had taken the queen, then the rook is just shooting up and it's going to be checkmate. So that's the type of pressure that we're talking about, even from the 1800s. So that's basically the idea. Putting pressure towards the king or the king area and checkmate straight away. Take a look, look at another game of Wilhelm's. Okay, just quickly running through. So we won't see any mark differences. We're looking basically at the concept of putting pressure towards the king or the king area, attacking key pieces where necessary, but the whole focal point is attacking the king or the king area. Pieces around the king, space, spaces around the king. So developing the knight, pushing the pawn through, developing the knight, just jostling the bishop for a position towards the king area as you can see so they go for a sacrifice of the bishop now the rook has got a discover check on the king pressure towards the king area so i can't say it any simpler than that. now the queen comes through makes sense and keeping that pressure the opponent's trying to keep the pressure on the king but now they've got a rook in the center of the board by itself it's not really got a team working with it so they move the knight out of the way and then at this point it's going to be checkmate in a few moves. So that's kind of the Wilhelm Steinitz um, era. And there are a lot more games um, around that area with Wil Wilhelm Steinitz. I do like his style of play and because it does really typify the answer process in the 1800s. Boris Spassky. Looking at the answer process. It's playing as white. So again, we're just looking at the end strategy, which is to put pressure towards the king or the king area, or key, key pieces around the king. So if we just have a look at how this game transpired. So they've castled on the king side has black. That's a key focal point to remember about putting pressure towards the king or the king area that then makes the decision as to what you're going to be doing going forward with your plan. As you can see now, Boris has lined up his pieces almost instantaneously facing the king. It looks quite frightening, doesn't it? Okay, so putting pressure towards the king or the king area not rushing it like quick and dirty tactics. This is like a slow process. Bringing the other rook into the game. Hoping that you're fast enough to get across towards the king area and um, condense them a bit. So the queen comes up. Knight comes in. 
and at this point it's going to be about 12 moves or something before a checkmate is going to be taking place so that's the the idea of the answer process as we've mentioned it's um, been done for many years from the birth of playing chess that was the whole idea behind it is being able to do that and it doesn't matter how you open up per se so long as you've got that concept in your head as to does this help me gain that pressure towards the king or the king area or disrupt pieces around the king or does it give me a benefit in terms of position that's going to eventually get me towards the king or does this particular movement just make the opponent capitulate and resign you know do I take off more pieces of theirs than they can of ours so they don't have any more pieces to work with so the answer process very simple straightforward stuff what we're showing in this these examples is that key thing about the pressure towards the king or the king area that help to inform your plan your strategy and the movements of your pieces Edward Lasker. So we're basically looking at Edward's games and seeing what is um, how he's utilised the answer process within his framework. As we've mentioned before, we're not looking at particular openings. We're looking at the strategy and the sort of position of the moves in terms of putting pressure towards the king, the king area, spaces around the king, or key pieces around the king. So they opened up. And as we can see already, the picture is starting to build up. So the queen grabs, so the rook can put a check on the king. King's not gone and castled yet, so it's still a little bit airy. Queen's doubling up. It's probably looking to triple up maybe as well, putting more pressure towards the king. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece, can't be wrong. So the bishop attacking the queen. So again, putting pressure onto this pawn here with two pieces. Bishops come back, the king hasn't got castled yet, it's still very airy. So the rook's coming out now, looking to kind of block that off. But the queen probably, king has probably just landed itself in line, in the line of fire for white's pieces. Look at that massive sacrifice. Right in front of the king. Putting pressure on the king and the king area with the queen sacrificing the queen the pawn takes and it's all over that's an unbelievable checkmate from putting pressure on the king of the king area with that queen sacrificed the king can't go anywhere it can't go here it can't go here because of the rook it can't go here because of the bishop Theophilus thompson and this is in the 1800s as well and as usual we're looking at the answer process being utilized in the 1800s the pressure towards the king area key pieces key pieces around the king key spaces around the king area so plain as black Theophilus just opens up and captures the pawn develops his bishop so he's got two pieces out they're kind of active at the moment opens up the white square bishop not going to go through the movements per se we're looking at the concept of pressure towards the king or the king area so the knight develops attacking the bishop and white seems to be a little bit slow in terms of developing and attacking any key spaces or areas and uh, they go for a very defensive maneuver here with the pawn rook now looking to get some action towards on this e-file starts developing the bishop slow incremental steps towards it because it's not quick and dirty tactics it is quick and dirty tactics if it's available you know if the opponent's asleep and you can take advantage of a quick and dirty tactic then by all means go for it but the concept of the answer process in its real real form is it's slow incremental steps that build up towards attacking the king or the king area key spaces around the king etc that's the quintessential difference between quick and dirty tactics so now the bishop comes through attacking the king it's got to check on the on the rook as well so the king's obliged to take at this point in time this is where 
the king is now being opened up and the advantages are being taken from black so it was a bit of a shocker you know the bishop taking the king takes things so it's got a free piece but it's opened the gateway for key spaces around the king to be attacked so the king drops back grabs a piece but it's improving the position on the board all the time the queen's looking for an exchange queen's not having any of it smaller pieces attacking higher pieces queens get looking for a better position to actually start targeting the king the king rook comes up and now it's all said and done so that is the general idea looking at these types of games researching this these historical games that was what i've pulled from it for myself personally um i've not looked at any technical openings that they've utilized it's looking at well in the grand picture of things what they've done is put pressure towards the king and the king area and key key spaces around the king eventually so i'm going to take another, another one off theophilus's games and they're playing as wise here so nice and steady again i like I like the way he just throws this pawn out there. This pawn does have does not have any protection on it whatsoever, you know. But he's throwing it out there just to dis misalign the the dark square bishop. Smaller piece again comes up and attacks the bishop. So again, the bishop is having to move. So he's winning small, tiny, incremental tempi tempi against this bishop. So it's not allowing the other pieces to be developed on the board. And we're talking, this is 1800s here, so this is nothing new. This is nothing, you know, that definitely I've not created, like I've said before. It's more a case of having a look at how it is that these players operated and what was it. And the key thing is, across the board, attacking the king and the king area, key spaces around the king, key pieces around the king, slowly but surely developing your pieces towards that aim. So the knight comes out, pawn pushes through the center, and the knight grabs. So as you can see, now there's this fried liver looking type thing that is taken charge of. So choosing the moment to actually go for that, because this is 1800s, you know, you probably expect to see this in the later years or something, you know, but this was happening back then, so it's nothing new. So the bishop takes, again, opening up the king. You know, the space around the king. Look at how airy that king is. It doesn't have any company with it whatsoever from its team. They're on the other side of the board. So now the black's looking to try and get his knights, well, his pieces, covering his king as best possible. Queen comes up. Bishop attacks, but it's kind of put itself in a little bit of danger but don't want to go into too much detail about the specifics let's just look at the bigger picture which is the king is being airy now there's a double dose of attacks coming onto the knight giving access through to the king once this pawn attacks this knight then would either get free they don't either get a free knight or the knight moves and there's pressure towards the king area so the pawn comes down to block that off and then the rook gets a check on the king. So either way, there's pressure going towards the king area and more pressure coming from the queen. And again, more pressure now, rook attacking the knight. Rook can take, knight can't move, pressure towards the king area. Just following on from the research that we've just been doing, well, re-researching and just actually turning them into vlogs so that we know where the answer process is coming from in terms of how we've done our own research and then how we're trying to develop our own answer process. I've not played a long play game on here for a while, so this might be a bit sticky, but we will try and practice the answer process. This is a 15 minute, 10 second game, rapid game. But we are in the high end, um, it's a 1900. A 
and they look fairly high on others. Uh, 1500 for Blitz. 1900 with a question mark for the classical. So they look like a pretty serious player. So they've moved. Let's see what we've got. Castled. Spring the knight through. Just attacking unprotected bottom, but really looking to go and castle. Oh, I've got to remember. This recording only lasts for 15 minutes. So I'll have to make sure I save it. Come back in again. Right, okay. I don't think it'll last that long though. It's a 1900, they're pretty serious, aren't they? Let's uh, castle. There'll be no way that they will get beat by somebody underneath them. And this is where we'll see the magic. All right, so we can take, and then we get the botheration of this type thing. Knight having to come here. Is there anything else? Could go like this. And if he does take, then we can take it back. But it's probably just going to push down onto the knight. Knight then jumps here, attacking the bishop. Bishop comes here. Knight's on the rim, so we'll have to push this pawn because this pawn will be coming to attack it. So that's all a bit... Yeah, that's... Could take. I don't really... Because when we take, then they do push. Then the knight's up here. somehow they end up still defending this probably bringing the bishop here or something so you don't kind of win out do you so I'm going to just go with simple and go with that simple route there push here type thing be a shocker if they took this is a 1900 so they'll be looking to press forward they won't waste the time taking here they'll be pushing down Oh my days, they haven't done any of that. What is the deal? Let's just take. I don't want to dance with any technical business. Yeah, I'm not into any of that. Um, so they move quick there. So we could just take just to simplify and get stuff off the board if they want to play that sort of game. I'm just taking. And I just hit the queen. I would have expected a little bit more from a 1900 in terms of but if they're going simple, I'll, I'll go simple as best possible. Yeah, why did it take so long to make that move? You know, let's just go and attack the bishop. This bishop's gone all the way back. When they do odd moves like these, I just, I lose the will. Right, so, is it our thinking time? Can we come here and his queen is there so we can't do any destruction over here yet could go opposite the king could put hit the pawn pawn just drops knight goes and attacks the queen situation although our queen is still here so if we did push he could bring his rook across and we've still got two pieces defending can we hit his queen with anything? Can the queen come and do a horizontal? I think this looks better, you know, just pushing this pawn. Oh, hold on a minute though. If we push and he does push down, we can't go there because our knight is, our pawn is blocking there. So he pushes down onto the knight. Where does the knight go? I have to come all the way back. Ah, oh, so that's not, that's not a good one really, is it? No, that's not. But if we went mm, here, I was thinking of trying to attack the white square bishop, but the queen is here. Has to end up here. Hmm. Let me see. Come on, time's running out. Oh, I've got to look at the time as well. Oh, it's nine minute. Let's go let's go let's go what do we want to do 
I think we need to come off of this thing. I'm going to bring it here. I suppose the bishop can come and harass it. Do we go up? Leaning here, he's got that support in though. Mm -mm -mm. Then we could attack the bishop. I don't think they'll allow us that though. We'll go there, he probably just drops the pawn. Attack the queen, double the pawns. I don't know, he's just doing a sitting waiting game at the minute, taking ages over his moves. Uh, dear. Bishop out. I mean, it's so obvious. If he does that, I mean, it's so obvious. Why are they taking this long to make that move? It's surreal. It's absolutely surreal. There's no other move that you would do as a human, you know, I mean, basically, I mean, you, you probably, you wouldn't do that because you'd lose your pawn. You're not going to bring your knight out. It's not attacking anything. It's, you, you want to be developing and attacking something, as far as I'm aware, as a human. What is there to think about? It's so annoying. <laughs> ah, dear me. So I made my move because I didn't want to lose my time, but they came out with the obvious move. Took all that time to do the bishop move, like we said. So we've moved the queen here, and then they've made their move here. Alright, so I think we can get away with this pawn move now. So I'm going to push the pawn move up. If they don't take, we could have a little bit of a fork going here. So we're just trying a little bit of stealth. If they take knights, putting pressure on both pieces. But they really are taking kind of long on the moves. But it is a 15 minute 10 second game. So I have to cut them some slack. It's because I keep playing these quick games. I'm like, oh, you know, they've got to move quickly. But I'm really a long play player. I just get annoyed when obvious moves, they just take the time. Maybe it's not obvious. Maybe it's, um, okay, let's have a look at the obvious move and re-look at that and re-look at it and keep checking to make sure that it is an obvious move. Is there something better? Maybe that's what they're doing, that type of thing. But it's still annoying. Especially when they do make the obvious move. And really, your calculation knows it's the obvious move. It is the best move to make. What's the point in wasting all that time and that calculation? So... I mean, look at this. They've taken, what is it, three, three minutes or something, if not more, to make that simple move of the pawn, capturing the pawn here. And we said, we're just going to bring the knight here because it's still going to be attacking two pieces. Uh, oh, now they're moving quick. So they've got some sort of strategy going. Uh, I don't think that's a very interesting strategy for me. Oh, they're going real quick now. So there must be a bullet specialist then, so the queen's taken. But the queen has got a bit of a problem because I feel like just because we've done the research already, you know, just recently, um, we do have like a two-on-one type thing with a jammed in rook here and the queen's protecting this square. So the opponent moved dead quick then after all of that long thinking. But has it put them in a good position than blasting all over the board? 
So we're just going to attack the queen, and through there we've got the pawn, and through there we've got the rook. Whether we get it or not, I don't know, but it just looks a little bit favourable for us for a moment. Oh my gosh, and they've resigned. <laughs> oh, dearing me. Ah. <sighs>